of his 27 guns, 41 men, and hope. I remember even one of the scenes that, that doesn't show up in the film is of him waking us up to do, uh, what do they call them, drills, military drills. And the young people on set were like, but he's weird. <laughs> They're like, why? Why would he wake you up that early in the morning to do military drills? And then I would be like, that's his idea of intimacy, you know? That's his idea of like playing with his kids. I have no apologies about being the daughter of Museveni and Jan Yuri and Janet Museveni and telling their story. I don't think it was me glorifying, I think it's me telling it, but of course how it is received depends on the person receiving it. This is a story that happened way back. I think we should build to this. I, I don't want to see my country go back to that. It was really, really, really tough. Most of the young generation don't know what happened, where a foundation is built, the, the freedom we enjoy, they don't know who paid for it, how it came about, and um, as a result, people don't kind of like appreciate. The key issues of democracy, of justice, of equality before the law, of good governance principles have been lost. Unfortunately, General Museveni seems to be trapped in the very history that we fought against because we believe that uh, leadership should be transparent, leadership should be democratic, that people should be able to express themselves through periodic free and fair elections. I think the story is relevant to, to all Ugandans for all time, just for us to know, so that whatever decisions or Whatever happens in the future, we just we know where we're coming from, and the the price that was paid for the liberty that we enjoy today to do and say and the things that we do uh, a, a very heavy price was paid. People died, you know.